Wow, Rick, you look more like George W. Bush than you do Putin. It amazes me how much Indians think you look like George W. Bush. <laughs> me too. It's really strange. <laughs> like I've, I've have never, you guys seen George I've W. Bush? I've literally never seen it. I've <laughs> never had anybody. But you get it all the time. I from know. Indians. And I've never had anyone but Indians say that about me or to me. <laughs> <laughs> and what's interesting is um, the film is not supposed to be a direct impersonation. If it were, it would have been a completely different look. So. Yeah. Vodka. But thank you, Stupid Babies. You've pushed that trailer up to nearly 50,000 views and 99% of the comments are nothing but love and support, which is typical of the Christian, our, our writer, director, flabbergasted at the love and support of Stupid Babies. If only Bollywood filmmakers would realize what we can do for your film. It's true. Would you like your trailer to get 50,000 views? Come on now. <laughs> Just... Hey, welcome back to our stupid reacts. Is Corbin? We got the views. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or GC content. Thanks to Patreon, follow us on account, subscribe to the like button. Today we got a video. This is from the channel Jubilee, uh, and this is what is it like to be black in India? And so this is from their Spectrum series. I don't know if you've ever seen a video of Jubilees and their Spectrum. I've actually been in a few Jubilee videos. That's what I was going to say. I've, I've, I, that's what I've seen. The Spectrum ones where, you know, people, they ask a question, and you go strongly disagree, strongly yeah. agree, blah, blah, blah. They, and this is a Were they the ones that did the thing where guess if I'm gay that you yes. did? Okay. I did that one. Yeah. I've also done a Spectrum one with white people, uh, which is probably, I think, their most popular video ever. <laughs> Uh, of, of jubilees, mm. but um, it's a it's a, f a fun little concept. But this is a a little um, series offshoot of Spectrum. It's still Spectrum, but it's uh, they've done it in like what's it like to be black in Japan, mm. China. They've done India. Interesting. And these are all people that I believe should live in India, right? And are are Af uh, not African Americans. So they're black. Um, and so it's super super interesting. Uh, all these and so because these these people's experience and. I'm, uh, I'm intrigued. Kind of stuff. So, uh, anytime you're a minority in a in a country, it's just you know you're gonna uh, hopefully you don't go through insane times, but you're gonna go through discrimination just because. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. People sadly. just are weird. Sometimes. Obviously, uh, minorities in America. But go it is. It, it it I I would really love to know what it is with the black. We are we know full well as well as a white person can understand what the black experience is for black people in America. Yeah. Because there's no other group here. If you don't know it, like Indrani asked me, she said, if I went to Mississippi, would I need to be concerned how they treat me? And I and everyone who's ever talked to her said, no, because you're you're white brown. <laughs> you're not black. I mean, they would treat you differently if you were a black woman versus an Indian woman. I mean, she, still, she would still get some racism. Yeah. But not like black people get. Yeah, exactly. Here we go. Spectrum is a social experiment that explores the diversity of perspective that exists within a shared identity. The opinions expressed by the cast are not the opinions of Google, YouTube, or Jubilee. Thanks for watching. It's sad to say what I'm going to say. We don't matter right now. So I like India because they have the outlook of a Nigerian, but I have the inside personality of an Indian too. And be my true authentic self is what makes me happy living here. In order to make activism work, you need to have the backbone of other people, not only black people. So you find it easy to it's date? It's easy to date. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> me, Rosalind, Ahe. Peter. Mary. Joshua. Deidre. Nanesiru Ramnath. Nano Bharati Africa Nagite. Yes, people. Oh, they're question playing holy. Me every day of my life. But this is definitely home. Probably a similar experience to what uh, Northeastern Indians go through. India sure. is one of the world's oldest civilizations, dating back to roughly 2500 BC. The country is best known for its spice, textile, and entertainment industries, which are influenced by India's 2,000 different ethnic groups. But out of a population of close to 1.4 billion people, only about 60,000 Wow. That's small, huh? The first black people arrived in India from Africa during the fourth century. Didn't realize it was so as small. Slaves and others as merchants. 
by the 16th century, many of the free Africans served as warriors and rulers, but those enslaved remained as outcasts with low status. Their descendants, a tribal community known as the cities, continue to live in the forest to this day. Had no idea. Wow. They brought together a spectrum of black people, from mixed race individuals to natives to expats, to learn about their culture, Expat. community, and the black experience in India. Super interesting. I find it easy to make friends in India. Three, two, one. Hmm. It's always so interesting, people's answers. Totally, I totally split. Friends. Yeah, I've always found it easy to make friends. I just, I'm a people's person. I, I just go up to them and speak to them. For me, when I try to make friendship, they just go away. They said, uh, you are something different from us. Uh, mm. We can't trust you. That's what they say. So I feel, it's, no, it's not that easy to make friendship. I think everyone in this room will agree. Everyone has faced We've the same thing. Faced it, but right. I think I kind of use that to my advantage. And I go in with a, a particular perspective that I know I'm different. And uh, that is why you sh probably should be friends with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's when a lot of it. Home, personal input. I used to read about India because I loved India even when I was young. I wanted to come and study here. So I used to read about India. I knew some things here and there. From observation, most of those that are open minded once lived outside and then they come so they've met other people. I feel like it's hard to make friends because you already know the idea they have of you because they literally use stereotypes and per like perceptions. I've had like moments where I have been approached like by Indians and the first thing they assume is like I'm from Nigeria which is like okay it's not right, bad of course. like Nigeria is a country but at least try and ask me where I'm where from. from yeah don't make an when assumption I ask you that question mm -hmm. of uh, you know just assuming you're from Nigeria mm -hmm. probably you got to understand that that's the only thing they know right they're ignorant so you got to approach that with a, sometimes with a little bit of empathy took me a while to understand that not everybody is that educated or well-traveled to know everything. You don't have to travel to know things. Not everyone knows everything, right? But not every also not everybody has the privilege also. If you take my friends, for example, like my school friends, initially we were in school, we, we obviously had an altercation and stuff like that. But now, today, they, because it's because of me that they can see it through my lens and look at other people of color differently. Isn't that a win? I think it's a win. It is, Peter. That is a win. My name is Peter Muka Manuel. My mother is Indian. My dad's Nigerian. Yeah, he has such an interesting Nigerian. accent. We came to it's India like a mix. With my mother. It's my beautiful. And me. So my sister Rosalind and I, we, we are really close, for sure. He is a mix of a Nigerian and an Indian accent. The protective one. Growing up, I didn't want to accept that I'm Nigerian. Everyone around school and stuff look up at I did not get a background story in my or spectrum. I tried to be picked on because of the way you look. Thank you. Thank you. Children can be brutal. Mm. Making friends in school, initially, it was tough. To me, you've always been like Indian, you know. We don't think about yeah. stuff like I've never looked at you as. That's how, we, uh, uh, that's how we speak, right? When you when you see you, okay. right? You, obviously, you look different, okay. and, and different is not bad. Yeah. And then you start talking to them like, hey, what about you? You're just like the rest of us. And Neville Irani has been one of my closest friends since uh, I was a kid. The good side of uh, being black mm -hmm. came to me from sports, right? Yeah. I just got all the attention because of that. As I grew up, I think I got more interested in my culture because I felt like if there is something so different about me, which I am not seeing and the world is, there has to be something there. So I started digging deeper and uh, I think uh, a part of me started accepting uh, being from there because that is who I am. Mm. Dating in India is hard for me. Mm. Three, two, one. Oh, wow. <laughs> hmm. You need to oh, think yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you disagree? Yes. So you find it easy it's to date? It's easy to make friends. <laughs> yeah. Easy to date, but hard to make friends? 
Okay. You're the same person who said your friendship more. was. Yeah. If you're really uh, trying to understand them, and if our, if our ideology is like similar, then it's easy. Mm. So you're saying if you approach a woman yeah. who you really like, yeah. Uh, so and if she's if, okay. If she agree. Uh, uh, what uh, I believe. She, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Does she agree? No, no, no. <laughs> look, let me rephrase. Okay. This is how you look. Mm -hmm. This is a woman, mm -hmm. possibly an Indian-looking woman. Okay. You are interested in her. Mm -hmm. Okay. You approach her. It can be from one side, right? No. Listen, it can be from one side, right? Yeah, but he he no, no, no. He has a point there. Yeah. He has a point there. Dating can't be from one side. One side. I can like anything, but I can't get it right. Yeah. Yeah. So if she agree, then we can date. No, has that happened to you? Like, is it? Yeah. When when you approach someone, is has it been smooth going? Yeah. If if she really likes me or like what I my personality. Then she can agree, so we can have. Yeah, I, I, I think I get what he's saying. He's talking about the process that once you all get to know each other, dating a person from in the Indian culture, whether there's like a blend and whether it's easy to keep a woman happy. Yeah. So I think that's what he's saying. No. So how why, why often has that Because happened? I have everything which other people have. When I approach an Indian woman, definitely there is some woman who really likes me because my personality. Because when they uh, get to know about me, that struggle which I have. To come over of this level, then they really agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I can understand. He would be more invested in someone he likes than just a casual mm. friendship. Yeah, man. Yeah. Karnataka. Siddhis are uh, from Karnataka. A tribe community in India. So we are all living in the forest. From the childhood, uh, from the six year old, when we start the school, I was walking through the forest for four kilometers to see the school. It was a really uh, a tough time for me. I'm the first person who got a postgraduate in a community. Oh wow! As a therapist. That's But awesome. When I come to city, it is a uh, difficult life. For oh, me. I bet it was a hard people adjustment. People look at me in a different way because I looks like African, but still I'm Indian. So I feel so yes, you are. I was gonna say he must have felt so alone. Oh, I feel all the time very comfortable living in the forest rather than the city because there is no discrimination. There is no different. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've never actually even thought about dating Indian men. Why? Mm. Because for me personally, I feel like they would say no. And like coming from their background and the caste system, which is also very very strict, I feel dating outside the race is something that most of them don't actually even think of. They're mostly like mm. no. Never been approached. No. Okay. No. You, you mean to say that you never try? I don't want to try. Okay. Mm. <laughs> 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 <All right. laughs> So for me, like what she said, you have like these Indians approach you, you start talking, and then I don't think they even care about. Love those jeans, yeah. Are. I'm not the person that's like, no, I can't be with an Indian. I can't. Be. No, mm. I like people for who they are as human beings. So I give people a chance to like get to know them. I have been told, especially by my female friends, that most, I don't know, there's this perception. That people think that every black, black woman, woman is, is good. good at sex. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's why I said another thing. Yeah. <sighs> so obviously, most people who've been approached by Indian guys, it's just been all about that, mm. not even about like a long-term yeah. relationship. Wow. Most of the time, their approach is always intimacy at the start. Yeah. With. But then you give this person a chance, and before it even goes anywhere left, they're already talking about everything that they think black women do. I mm. somewhat agree. There was once where one guy said, "Yeah, we can date, but no one needs to know." Mm. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> a few years later, I met my husband, who actually likes black women. Mm. Oh, like he specifically said that to his friend. That's a, that that's what he's attracted to. If you want to gift me something, <laughs> give me your African girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> And she actually said, "Okay, fine, done." And he was like, "No, I was kidding. How are you going to do that?" Well, he didn't know that she knew me through work. Ha! And that's she great. She arranged for us to meet, and that's how we met. Oh. In my case, it's it's been difficult to date in India because most of 
the men which I have approached or have approached me mm. objectify me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. They see me as a black person. Right. Okay. I might be dangerous. I might be a criminal. Or some other things. So hence, I get denied on. Yeah, and other stereotypes. But at the end of the day, also sometimes I always it always comes back to how I look. Mm. Namaste. Kese. My name is Joshua Keselako. I'm 25 years old. My mom's Indian and my dad's from Nigeria. Mm. So when I moved to India, I was around eight or nine years old. Mm. I wasn't allowed to play certain sports because of my height difference and for my color. For certain plays, I couldn't do certain plays and roles in musicals and stuff in school. Mm. Being excluded from playing certain things or doing certain things made me feel alone most of the time. It was made me feel like an outcast at times. The hardest part of living in India is being different from everybody else. I'm black and I'm queer, and they think black people are supposed to be uh, really strong and macho and all, and I'm a mix of both. Mm. Oh, I great outfit, bro. I'm a model and actor over here for the past 10 years now. Yeah, yeah I can see why. It's beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous, queer, man. Like, they can be mean and nasty with the words they say, but at the end of the day, it's you who has to look out for yourself, you know, at times. And that kind of made me stronger, and that was... Like, oh, such a handsome face. I feel free to practice activism around black issues. Mm, in India. Great question. Three, nice question. Two, one. Mm, wow. Yeah, these are always so interesting with answers, you know. In order for you to protest and rally and participate in all these things, we actually need to feel that we have the right to do so. Mm. Let me give an example of, you know, this, this famous, like, the recent black lives movement uh, for Breonna Taylor and okay. George Floyd. Floyd yeah. Yeah. You could actually see that when the black people in America were protesting, they were actually being backed by so many politicians, by people from other races. And no, yeah, non-black people. Like yeah. The entire world on Instagram, Twitter, everybody was posting about Black Lives Matter. Everyone was saying that enough is enough. And I feel like in order to make activism work, you need to have the backbone of other people, mm. not only black people. Yeah, community. Honestly yeah. speaking, we are not the majority. We are a very, very... We are smaller than a minority. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Minorities. Yeah. yeah. Take, for example... A micro-minority, probably, in India, with the, those numbers. Up, I only knew my brother as another black guy. So yeah. that's how insignificant it is here. We do have racism when it comes to black and Africans. But I always uh, differentiated between casual racism, right, and hate racism. Mm. In India, we don't, at the moment, have hate racism to an extent where people are being murdered. Mm. We, we, right? we, 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 I'm talking about in numbers, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying, like, in America, mm -hmm. right? Black it's names. happening every yeah. day. Yeah. It's hate-based. Yeah, 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 so for sure. Versus so ignorance-based. Yeah. You can't take enough, right? You're, like you said, it's happening, right? Mm -hmm. But how many people know about it? Yeah. Because, because it, it happens nobody, once. Yeah, exactly. Because nobody, nobody talks about numbers. it. Nobody talks about it. We nobody talks numbers. about it because it's not been highlighted. We are not. It's sad to say what I'm going to say. We don't matter right now. You, know? mm. you understand? Yeah. <laughs> we don't matter. That's the hard fact. Yeah. There, they matter because the people, the 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 the, the they have black ancestors. lives that are fighting for black lives over there come from power. You're, like again, I repeat myself, the people who are protesting, even when it comes to even Twitter or whatever, are people like Beyonce and people who are you power have in people. the world. Yeah, but I feel like that's not really true because if you follow all these movements, mm -hmm. the people who have actually started. led the movements are actually people my age, true. people in university. 100%. The person who recorded George Floyd's death was 100%. a girl my age. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was not Beyonce. I know. She's the one who posted on social media. You know, and you're saying that how many deaths compared to America here? We don't need black don't people need to it. die exactly. for people to realize that we don't have to be treated in a bad way. Mm. Love these conversations. Me too. Well, I came here a bit young. My mom uh, got posted here via a government job. She was sent to serve as the high commissioner 
to Zambia in India. Mm. So I have been staying in India for five years. I am pursuing my studying law at Gaugotes University in Uttar Pradesh. Coming from Africa, we are definitely into our culture. And that's something I noticed about like the Indians. They are very proud of their dressing, their food. People from here still like keep their culture and love it the same way we do back home. It's something that I admire. Yeah. It's been very difficult, like getting to be beautiful part of hair. the Indian community and as well as the black community because there's no acceptance for you. Because in the Indian community, it's like, oh, you're light, but you're not that like light for us to perceive you as light skin and stuff like that. And in the black community, people think that when you're like a black person who's light skin, then you have it better than others when that's not actually true. Mm. Mm. I have experienced colorism in India. Three, two, one. Yeah, yeah, all of the, yeah, yeah gotta, all on the agree side. Gotta think. Yep. That's cool, baby. Oh, wow. <sighs> what is that thing that you're disagreeing with, like, slightly? It happens a lot with me. I am always judged based on my color. When I went for an interview, they said, hey, you're too black to... Um, get the job. To get the job. Yeah. And so... That is why I was strongly disagreed. And why I said I was just being too kind, also I do agree, and it is because sometimes not everybody is like this, you know. I see what you're saying. I was doing that it's earlier. A, it's, it's a two-way yeah. thing. Like, I've sometimes tried, I, I can't. I struggle with this, yeah. like to see this, but it, when it comes to colorism, why I say uh, in India it's so prevalent is it doesn't even boil down to where you're from, right? You know, what ethnicity you are or whatever. Because from childhood, I've been here since I was a kid, right? So in the same school I went to, even I was called Kalia, and even another Indian kid who's probably from the South was called Kalia. So there was no mm. difference, you know what the I'm meaning saying? The is the same. It's the same. The thought is different. Oh no, trust me, when you're a child, that time for them it's a color, because yeah. from childhood there have been things like, you hear a mother tell the, do the daughter, or like don't play in the sun, you'll get dark. Mm. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's really it bad. Because for yeah. me also, it has impacted way when I was growing up. Before I got into modeling and stuff, True. I was always shy to be in front of the camera. I never yes. ever took pictures. Didn't like looking inside the mirror. I tried all this fairness cream and all this stuff. Mm. Just wow. so I could change my skin color. But I, think oh, I love your shoes, bro. It's made me realize like, what's the use? You just embrace yourself. And True. melanin is good. At least, hey, we have some better melanin here. True. So I'm happy with it. Me personally, growing up, I went through a phase where I never dated anyone because I had that in me that I'm black, I'm not beautiful, no one will date me. Mm. So the first time I even dated someone, I was at the age of 28. So you can imagine yeah. wow. the, the impact it has on you growing up. How old is she? Seriously. My name is Rosalind Manuel Fernando. 37? I'm a artist and a hairstylist. When was the last time I did your makeup? I, could, I would have thought I would have she put was at like 25. <laughs> 10 years? Are you kidding me? I was always artistic, so I thought makeup would be a good way to educate and that you can look beautiful no matter what skin tone you have. Mm. My mom is Indian. My dad was a Nigerian. Mm. And growing up, I always had very low self-esteem, especially because of my skin color. Sometimes I tell them, like, no, I'm born and brought up here. Like, you know, I'm from Mumbai. And they're like, no, your hair, no, it's not possible. Most men would not want to be seen with me. The guy I was dating, his mother actually told him, you can't marry this girl because you'll have black babies. Ooh. That's ah. the extent Ooh. of colorism in India. Ooh. Okay, where are you going? On oh. um, a date? Oh, I like it. <laughs> now, I'm married to an Indian and I have twin boys. Hey. I really don't know what twin. the future holds for them. I'm sure they will be questioned by their friends in future as to why your mother oh, is oh, gorgeous. and you all don't look anything like her. That is like a her. gorgeous photo. But the first step that I have taken is to first be comfortable in myself and the way I look. I feel at home in mm. three, two, 
One. Somewhat agree, somewhat disagree. That's mm, my guess. No. You'll get a somewhat agree, somewhat disagree. Ooh, strongly agree. She goes strongly agree. That's great. Wow, and strongly disagree. That's awesome. Wow. Okay, so I strongly disagree because, first of all, India is not home, so mm. I'm not even supposed to feel like home. Then secondly, it gets worse where you're already different, so you're treated different based on how you look. Mm. Thirdly, everything, what they believe in, and everything reminds you of how much you're not home, so it's difficult to feel at home mm. wherever you go. Mm. My name is Mary Kalevi. I'm a Zambian who's currently located in India. I'm a student of pharmacy, and India was one of the countries that are well known for medical fields. Mm -hmm. The school I went to was really in a remote place, so there were not much Africans. So we'd have some experiences where you're going in the market, you meet the locals, they want some selfies with you, and then they touch your skin to see if like anything is coming out or maybe dust or something like that. Or oh, there are times when someone just pulls your bread and you go back and then they'll be asking how long does it take for you to wash your hair? Yeah, that happens a lot. Mm. That's when you just tell them, you educate them more about Africa or black women in general. So sometimes yeah. it can make you feel bad, but at the same time you feel like, okay, maybe it's because we're just different and unique. That's why they are so anxious and nervous to know more about us. I do agree that uh, India is my home. This is a small world which I have. There are a lot of other world which hate me. And yeah. You don't feel accepted? Yeah. yeah. I don't think about Yeah, It may affect me, but when I go to my home, my community, it is my world. So that's why I agree to be India my home. I think for someone to actually call it a home, you have to experience good stuff. You have to experience bad things <coughs> as well. And yeah, I mean, I've made friends here, I have my family here, so in, I can call India my home now because I've been here also for quite a long time. I came during my early teens and I'm still here out of my teens and I had my family live with me here so it literally just became a home to me somewhat because I left my home country early and this has been the second country where I've actually stayed. Well, I feel um this is home because this is the only place I have been. I have my friends, my family. I have started a family here. Yes, people look at me every day of my life. People question me every day of my life. But at the same time, because I speak the local language and I have that many friends, uh, it becomes very easy for me to communicate with people, make friends, so this is definitely home. Being good, meeting different black people in India, we all still have like different cultures, religions, things that we believe in, just how they are brought up, how they live, and they get to learn more from you as well, which is just amazing. <laughs> it always feel good for me when I feel like I'm African because that is one of the good things I feel like I'm proud because anybody can recognize me. I have a different look. I have a black look, which is very beautiful. Mm. You really need to find yourself around the right people. Even if you don't come from the same country, <laughs> the fact that you come from like similar backgrounds and the same continent. So obviously we do have somewhere where we can actually connect and get to know each other. I get to see it through their lens and there are some things that I relate to when we speak. There's some things I don't relate to but, uh, even when it, it is about talking about the same country we're living in. I have the outlook of a Nigerian but I have the inside personality of an Indian too. Mm. And be my true authentic self is what makes me happy living here. Yes, it is mm. important to stay confident. You're beautiful. We will always look out for each other and be there for each other. So that's how I look at it now. <laughs> as soon as I walk in a room, that kids start crying. No! That was beautiful. Yeah, a great video. They're always uh, w very well produced uh, videos Jubilee does, especially the Spectrum series. One of the better ones because they actually had um, 
because in the normal spectrum that they, I guess, have here in the United States that I was a part of one of their videos, you didn't do background of each person. Right. Um, so I'm guessing this Asian series that they're doing. They, Less people and yeah. go deeper into each yeah, person's story a little bit. each person. Yeah. Um, it's always so interesting because obviously we're not qualified to speak on their experience, obviously, in India. Yeah. And Indian yeah. is not really qualified to speak on their experience. Not at all. Just like a... Uh, I'm not a qualified to speak on a black person's experience in America because I didn't experience it. So you can't no. be like, that's wrong. That's their experience. <laughs> like you can't tell a person their experience is incorrect. Right. Uh, but I thought it was actually so beautiful because obviously even though they have all these – some of these experiences of colorism and, and stuff like that, they're st they still also have that – the guy said, yeah, yeah, I'm black on the outside, but I'm, I'm an Indian. Mm -hmm. um, and we heard that sentiment as well from like people in Northeastern India. Yeah. Also don't look Indian. You know? Right, right. Um, that experiences some of these things, but they, they love India just the same. And mm -hmm. um, it's just, it was, I thought it was a beautiful video. I did too. Super interesting. And and they didn't bring this up, but obviously one of the biggest contributors to, to um, what the response was here for Black Lives Matter with Breonna Taylor and Floyd and uh, you name it, but particularly after Floyd. And uh, the, the difference f is not just that there's more people and there's more black Americans than there are black Indians. It's, it's the depth of our nation's history being rooted in the mistreatment of black people. That differentiates black issues here, not just from population standards it's, but it's, our history is rooted in the abuse of black people and it's the black american right experience is different than the black experience and, and, and other it, uh, else places and it has not stopped it's just changed there were advances during the civil rights movement but that's that's part of the reason and it's got to feel so uh, my heart particularly goes out to i forgot his name but the gentleman from the the forest community yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What a shock to, to not only be amongst people that are supposed to be your own because you're an Indian, yeah. but you definitely feel, I don't see anyone who can relate to me. And now add to that city life versus forest life. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. God, hats off to you for continuing to, to live in that environment and, and survive. And it was super interesting because I think a lot of people, like what that other gentleman said, I think it was Peter, he said it. He doesn't see a lot of hate racism, right? As opposed to, I forget whether he called it ignorance, probably ignorant, yeah, racism, ignorance racism. Which, um, even though obviously I'm sure there is hate racism, obviously there's though people hate all around the world. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's obviously the reason why he said America specifically. We have a lot of that, but we also have guns, mm -hmm. and so the people that hate you can easily kill you, and we have a legal <laughs> system that very clearly and obviously the history of yeah. black people. I mean our legal system and our financial institutions. Yeah. If you know the history of black Americans, this country has been geared to screw them forever. Yeah. Um and so obviously we have that and it's just easier as well. To, yeah. Uh and obviously if something happens in America, it's going to be louder, right? Uh, right around the world, right? Um, and the, but they're right. They're, they're right. Not I mean, wrong at all. Sixty thousand. That's a micro minority. It is. I don't a even micro know that, minority. I don't even know if that qualifies for a micro minority. That might be even too small for even a micro smaller. Because sixty thousand compared to the one point four billion, it's not even one one hundredth of one percent. No, no. It's a, like I said, it might yeah. not even qualify for a micro, which is minority. A, which is the truth that they do not have a particular voice because there's just strength in numbers, and they just they just don't have that. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I, that was really enlightening because I would have never had any clue as to what it's like to yeah. be black and live in if India. If there are, are any stupid babies that are black and oh, Indian, yeah. please let us know. Please let us know. Uh, I would love to. I don't... Maybe I've experienced it. Obviously, I've, I've, I've heard of, from a lot that are northeastern Indian. I'm sure that are some that are African Indian. I, I tell you, the ignorance factor black would come Indian, into play African. for me. If, if, I, if we were in Mumbai and I saw a black person, my immediate ignorant supposition would be mm. they're traveling here from Europe or America or yeah. Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're not native. And then I would be shocked to find out that they were. And then from there, the ignorance would be gone, and I would yeah. just be so intrigued. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's I can't imagine. Super interesting. And I bet there's a, the same like if you asked to how to be like Chinese in 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 India, like if you're a yeah. Chinese person that lives in India, uh, or if or if you were yeah, if you were if you were someone who was born in Chennai, yeah, 
and then your parents when you were two moved you to Niger mm -hmm. and you grew up in Niger amongst all of these Nigerians, mm -hmm. you'd feel like an outcast. Yeah. Or if you're a, a, the, the experience of a, of a black person living in India would be a lot of different than if this was done as a white person in India. I'm sure you'd still feel uh, face the stuff, but it's probably on the more positive side. Yeah, uh, they have be a they, because of the the wanting to be lighter. Right. The yeah. dynamic that they have is the inherent problem of dark versus light. That's part of yeah. the culture that's very different that th be, they're already at a disadvantage because of the darkness. Be, it would be interesting to see that video though of white person who would be a minority. Yeah. In India, like like uh, who uh, in a like, particular region, uh, Mark Bennington's son, right? Let's say when he when he grow, uh, grows up to see his experience because he'd be Indian, grew up right. in India, uh, but experience like that. But also, do you what's your discrimination experience? Is is there any? Uh, what's Doubtful. the opposite experience? You yeah, because I, I, I'm sure there's some. You, you'll experience some if you're a minority anyway, regardless of if you're white. You're going to experience some. It just might not be as extreme as others because yeah. people are still going to be like, you're different. You're white. You're going to experience some. It might not be extreme. Mm -hmm. It might not be negative. Right. Um, so, but I'm just saying that would be an interesting video to uh, to to see those people. Yeah, I mean, one of the things, for example, that definitely happened, and Rani noticed it when I was with her for the first time in in Kolkata. Mm -hmm. We would walk up to places like, say, a, a a driver, and she would ask how much it costs to take us to a place, mm -hmm. and the driver would look at me. And then tell her a price, and Indrani would do this. She'd go, and walk away. And she'd say, he upped the price because he saw you were a white guy. He's trying to rip us off because he thinks you have money because you're a white guy here. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, when it, I think I've said this before. Whenever I was in India, I had a, like a, a wad of cash because I just cashed out money at the airport before we got here. Um, <laughs> and I never paid for anything. I just no, I handed it to one of the stupid babies that were always following us. Yeah, I just handed them a lot of cash and just said, "Go pay." Yeah, because I was like, one, I don't know, I don't know how this money works. Right. <laughs> Two, I'm sure I wouldn't get a fair price. Either. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so you go do this, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but it was great video, very, very wonderful video. Um, let us know what you thought. Even like I said, if you are a black Indian, please let us know in the comments below. Love to uh, know your experience. Yeah. Uh, and everything like that. Let us know what other videos we can react to down below.